Hello, hello, and welcome to what's going to be a real gush review. Like, really, this book tickled me and touched me in every which way but Wednesday. It's too much! Excuse me! It's too much! I'm going to get into that. It is a review of Exhalation by Ted Chiang. I picked this up purely because I knew that Arrival, the film directed by Denis Villeneuve, was based on a short story in his collection of... Uh, it's called Story of Your Life and Others, I believe. Um, so I went to the shop and was like, I'm going to pick this up. I'm sure it's going to be there. And they didn't have it, but they had Exhalation, his second collection, uh, which, first off, incredible cover. And you know it's going to be real weird one when the pull quotes are Barack Obama and Alan Moore, which is like the two polar opposites of human beings I could ever imagine. So before we get into that, the, the, these reviews, they're kind of, they, 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 this is the place where people that kind of watch the channel regularly-ish kind of coagulate. So uh, I'm going to do a kind of little channel update here, which is just that I'm, I'm starting university on Sunday. So uh, in preparation of that, I know my time t uh, timetable and stuff. So I'm planning on, rather than doing three videos a week, cutting down to two. Um, which I don't think anyone's going to have a problem with. I don't think anyone's going to be like, oh, I needed more of this person in my life. I'm not exactly that type of human being. The plan is either two skits a week uh, and maybe dot in a, a review or some kind of video, or depending on the type of thing, it'll be one skit a week and another video. That's pretty much it. I don't think there's really much other than that. Uh, so because I'm having to read a lot for uni that's not necessarily stuff that I want to review or would normally review, um, don't really expect it. Uh, skits may be involved with it, I don't know, depends how I feel, but for now we're just gonna just stick to skits because the one, they're real easy, and that's it. <laughs> that's the only reason. They're real easy. So as always, if you do enjoy, please do like, please do leave a comment. Uh, I know two people have bought this book because I've been hyping it so goddamn hard. So hopefully uh, you lot may do the same because God, this book's good. Um, and if you do want to talk about it or anything else, you want to put some memes or something, then the Discord is also in the description if you want to join that and have a chat. And so this book, my lordy lord. I've not read a lot of sci-fi, so I can't speak for this in terms of being like, oh yes, uh, as a connoisseur of sci-fi, this is quite the spectacle. Because that's not me. Uh, I'm a little fantasy boy uh, that's not even that well read, so don't expect that type of thing here. This is just awesome. So what I'm going to do is, I've not thought about how I'm going to review this at all because I just kind of wanted to see what happened. Um, but the main thing I'd say is, for a sci-fi book that's really based on its ideas, it does a good job of simultaneously being scientific and also having a bit of fun with things. It's not... It's not, do, uh, it's not working too hard to, uh, like, make you feel stupid. Uh, like, it's, it's not trying to be heady and really like, oh, well, you must be intelligent to appreciate this. The way I described it was, like, the prose reads as if you're reading someone's, like, in a thesis for a science project or something. You have to do, like, a layman's version, um, where you kind of dumb it down for everyday people. That's what it's like, like this reads, like, it's, it's jargon-filled, it's gonna use technical terms, but it does it in a way that doesn't feel like it's talking down to you or anything. This feels very personal and story driven, like character driven, um, which is the main thing I take away from this. This is a character driven sci-fi in short stories, which I found very impressive. Like the one complaint you always see about sci-fi is, well, it's a... Uh, it's, it's like the, the science is all cool and everything, but the, the characters aren't around enough, they're not interesting enough to kind of get you through it. It's all to do with the world building. Whereas this is like, the world building's really cool and everything, but it's the, the, the way you feel about the characters is what takes it up a notch. So I would say don't be scared of the, like don't be scared in terms of like I normally am with sci-fi, which is like, oh, this is gonna make me feel very stupid. I'm gonna feel bad about it because 
this isn't that type of book. This is doing a, a lot for you just to sit back and enjoy the story. There are nine short stories in here. One of them is like 110 pages, which is the longest one. Um, the shortest is like four. So it is a big span. And to give you an idea of what kind of setups we're getting for stories, the first one is called The Merchant and the Alchemist's Gate. And this is basically uh, a guy walks into a shop in Baghdad and uh, he's just like, this is a cool place. And it's full of all this kind of interesting sci-fi merchandise. And then the, the shopkeeper's like, why don't you come out, come out the back? There's something cool there. And when he goes back there, there's this kind of gate, this, this portal in the middle. And that when, he, when the shopkeeper puts his arm through, it disappears. And then he pulls it out. And then on the other side of the gate, I think it's like 20 seconds later, his arm comes out the other side. Um, and so it's this kind of, it sets up the premise of there's a, there's a, it's a gate that delays time. And so uh, it then leads up to the fact that there's a gate which has 20 years difference. And so he, it's the kind of story that begins by telling another story of someone that's also gone through the gate and their experience of uh, going back 20 years. And then we slowly get all these different short stories that culminate in this larger narrative for this short story. And the amount of work that's done in like 30 pages here is really incredible. Like, it's just, I don't know how to describe it. It's really cleverly done, simple storytelling. That as soon as I read that short story, I knew that I was into this. Like, if it, if it continued at that pace, I was going to love it. And... It did. I, I, the only thing I can think of is that towards the end of the book, there were a couple of short stories that either the, the description of the science didn't quite line up with my brain, but that could just be that I'm not a very clever person, more than likely. Um, but sometimes the description kind of just went over the edge to like, okay, I'm not quite getting what you're trying to say here. But the, the entire thing just... It's just brilliant. So we're getting into, we're having um, alternate timelines, like the idea of splitting and creating a multiverse. We're looking at the idea of AI. There are just so much, so many things, so many different concepts that are explored in this, but all come back to very human looks at it. it, it this isn't a, a distant book by any means. This isn't like watching Batman v Superman, where you're watching all the big fighting and everything and you never feel like there are any humans there uh, and then it just flashes to F Lawrence Fishburne like on a small set where you're just like okay this is stupid this is like a intimate story about the humans interacting with the new technology and the blend of that is really fantastic you've got you've got crime mystery li or like literary all this different forms of writing all explored using sci-fi to extend and exemplify what he's trying to get across. So what I'm going to do is, purely because I don't know whether I'm getting across, I know I'm getting across that I fucking loved it because I haven't stopped gushing about it, but in terms of the idea of the premises we're getting, this is by far the shortest, like we're looking at literally two, like three pages. And so what I'm going to do is, because that's the shortest, if you don't want to know about this story, because I absolutely adore this one, then skip ahead. It's all going to be down in the description. Um, but if you don't care about it, then I'm going to explain the premise of this story and the actual story itself. And then if you're interested in that, then this book will be for you. That's the way I'd do it. It's like a litmus test for it. Is it litmus? Litmus? One of you science people tell me, is it litmus or litmus? I think it's litmus. So this is a litmus test for the book as a whole. The short story is called What's Expected of Us. And the story begins where it's just a, uh, like a, a person talking in the past tense, first person and they're talking about the idea of the invention of a new toy and the toy is just a, a little a little remote that when you click it has either two buttons if you click the button a light flashes 
but the light flashes a second before you press it. And it's using this kind of, they describe it as like negative energy, it's this new exploration they were trying. And so if you go to press the button, a second before you press it, the light will go off. And it describes how people really enjoyed the premise, they thought it was a lot of fun, uh, and then people tried to start pushing it and tried to start beating it. And no matter what, if the light went off, a second afterwards you would press it, and if you didn't press it, and you made sure you didn't, the light would never go off. There was no way in which the light would go off after, or it didn't go off if you press it. No matter what, if you press the button a second before it goes off, and if the light goes off a second afterwards, it would have been pressed. And as a result of this, everyone goes, well, that proves there's no free will. Uh, pff, that sucks. And so the, the this story is about the entire world realizes it, it, con it confirms that we don't have free will. Rather than living in a society where you kind of feel like you don't, your decisions don't matter, which of course, I think a lot of people go around feeling like their decisions don't matter. Um, the difference between it having confirmed to the society that there is no such thing as free will, you cannot break this machine. It, it proves that what's destined to happen is going to happen. And as a result of that, some people take it badly and they're just like, you know what, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to make decisions. I'm just going to I'm just going to stop. And then that slowly reached the point where people stopped eating, people stopped drinking, they had to be taken into hospital. And then eventually they're put into these comas um, until hopefully the whole thing resolves itself uh, because they can't be trusted to look after themselves because they no longer feel like their decisions matter. So this story then reaches a point at the end where the person narrating is like, this is the first time we've ever been able to use this new technology to go back in time far enough to be able to actually speak to someone before everything went wrong. Um, and it's just like, no matter what, you just need to know that your decisions matter. We've always thought that we didn't have free will. We've always spoken about it. The, for some reason, the difference between knowing for certain that our decisions don't matter rendered our society where half the population just stopped functioning and we can't have that happen. And it then leads up to this idea of, well, I know what you're thinking, like, if, if there's no such thing as free will, and I know there's no such th thing as free will, then me sending a message back doesn't matter because those destined to be into a coma will reach that point anyway. It cannot stop, if destiny is a thing and we cannot stop the, the future from happening, then this message would have already happened, meaning that someone, it didn't work, and that the person would have still made it, it still would have happened, and those people still will end up in comas. So I know what you're thinking, why have I sent this message? Because I had to. And it's such a wonderful ending to this story, just like the whole concept of no free will being explored there. And I don't know, that short story was lit. And so if, if, if that premise sounds interesting to you, then this book explores that. That was in three pages, that's explored. Like, that is phenomenal, the amount of work that's done in three pages there to make an interesting story. So if you're interested in the, the the 110 page one had me like on the verge of like tears at some points where I was just emotionally affected by the story it was telling. Um, there were parts where I just had to stop because I was just enthralled by how clever the writing was. Um, this single handedly has made me want to read more sci-fi uh, and I think if you haven't read sci-fi before, this is a fantastic place to start because the short stories, you can just dip in and out. You don't. I was reading this alongside another book and it was just really nice to, at the end of an evening, just read a short story quickly and just get sucked in. Uh, and then if you do know a lot about sci-fi, I still think this is a worthwhile read. It, it, it's kind of a nice, I don't know, <laughs> it's nice. So I can only say that I completely recommend this book. It was awesome. I'm hoping at some point stories of, uh, what's it called, stories stories of your life and others will be in some shop near me because I really want to read it. Uh, but for the time being, 
like I, I've just <laughs> so at the moment I'm basically using my wish list because I don't expect anyone to actually buy me a book. I'm just using it as a kind of uh, like a list of books that I actually know that I would really want to read. And so that's now on there. So um, I will definitely get to that at some point because I love the rival and I do want to read his other collection. I think that's it. I think that's everything. I think I've gushed. Oh, sorry, I'm clicking my pen. I think I've uh, gushed about this book enough. 100% recommend it. It was awesome. Um, I know Esme, who sometimes watches the channel, she gave it a four and a half stars as well uh, after I recommended it. So that's another really high score. Can't argue with that. If you did enjoy, please do feel free to like, subscribe and leave a comment in terms of if you have read it i'd be interested to see what you thought and if you haven't read it then get on it sunshine and as always just have a nice rest of your day